All right, hey, uh, as we got a raven here. This is from uh, Sir Douglas of the Burning River. My lords, I hope this raven finds you well. Saddened by the news of the Big Ten football season being canceled, I have turned my attention to A Song of Ice and Fire speculation. As I work through a reread, I have found myself playing the What If game a lot. This made me wonder what both of your favorite what if scenarios are within the series or the histories. Um, he says, I have two, one from the main series and one from a world of ice and fire. So uh, he goes on here from a main series. Um, I've always found myself hung up on a quote from Catelyn two in a storm of swords. If you had to fall into a woman's arms, my son, why couldn't they just have been Marjorie Tyrell's? Could you imagine if Rob would have joined his host with that of the Tyrells? The Red Wedding probably doesn't happen at that point. Rob can march to the, the Northmen back to the home to retake Winterfell from the Ironborn while leaving the Tyrell host to guard the Riverlands or take Casterly Rock. Or he could have marched with the combined power of a North slash Riverland slash Tyrell army to take King's Landing from the Lannisters. Uh, then he goes on to pose another one here. From the histories, I always wonder what would have happened if Sir Barris and Selmy wasn't such a badass and rescued the Mad King from Duskendale. Ares probably dies with the walls of Dunfort with Tywin. Rhaegar and the host outside. The Dunfort is seized. Rhaegar is crowned and Tywin is hand. What happens next can go into a million different directions, but it is always fun to speculate. Uh, anyway, just wondered if any of these moments stuck out in your head or if you've read these uh, you know, as you read the, the series and histories. As always, your humble hedge knight, Sir Douglas of the Burning River. Um, and so uh, at some point, yeah, it, it would be, it, we, we, can, we can dive into his specific what ifs, but since he kind of asked it in a way of what are some of your uh, what if questions uh, in the series. Um, mine, actually, I'll, I'll go first as something I think would be really interesting uh, because when you play the what if game um, I, I I don't like what if games that basically just derail any sort of plot moving forward right you know like what if Ned Stark hadn't gone with what if what if he just refused to be handed the king well then the story probably doesn't go on I mean it's like well right. then he just goes back and you know hangs out so I was like I don't I, the, those it's like you know, it's it's kind of tough because it, it doesn't go on. So I have one that I think uh, I think um, presents a lot of really interesting scenarios. So mine would be: What if the Knights of the Vale had joined the Clash of the King? So if the Knights of the Vale are going to fight with, let's say, Rob, for example, well, by the time where you're at in a Clash of Kings, I think it'd be kind of interesting because then you could have a scenario in which uh, Baelish now what happens with Littlefinger? Because the Knights of the Vale being outside of it gives him kind of an escape with uh, Sansa ultimately to to go up there before you know Catelyn kind of dies and, and he's now kind of moving in on Sansa. Um, that's kind of his out. Okay, well I have this ties to the Knights of the Vale. I can take Sansa over there. Um, but if the Knights of the Vale join, then there's a ton of really cool scenarios you can look at. You can look at well. The Riverlands with Rob, um, he has at least some sort of kind of a claim, I guess, ultimately uh, in, in, into the Riverlands because his mom, is, you know, his mm -hmm. grandfather is yeah. Hoster Tully. Well, the Vale, he doesn't really have any sort of claim or anything to it because it's the Aarons, although John Aaron's dead. So Liza Aaron's there fostering her, you know, sweet little Robin. Um so, you know, she's just a Tully kind of sitting there. I mean, she's an Aaron, whatever. Uh, so they can stay neutral. But if they do decide to join and fight with Rob, now the whole King of the North business isn't as politically kind of correct, kind of cool, because, well, that doesn't we, – we don't – that we have no stake in that in in that game. Um, with, with the Knights of the Vale, they may not listen as well. And then you also block – sort of little finger kind of scheming his scheming kind of changes now and then Sansa may be a little more stuck because now he you, the Sir Danto stuff may not happen because he doesn't have a way to get her out or he has to go kind of maneuver uh, and, and do something else so maybe she is then more likely to ally herself with Tyrion um, and then you know that changes Tyrion's uh, kind of mm -hmm. planning because now maybe 
if he right. still ends up he it's likely Tyrion would still end up marrying her but she may be a, a little more I don't know you know she may she may she may be a little more fond of Tyrion I'll I'll just I'll just kind of leave leave it at that because he actually is providing her protection and things like that that she's actually using rather than you know I've got Sir Dantas here uh as my as my kind of oddly knight in shining armor who's going to whisk me away at some point no, I, I I like this, and I act, I think you are. I mean, similar into what into into Sir Douglas's uh, kind of thought is like the Clash of Kings is where you can really speculate as to what if just one little uh, like a, like an alliance shifted in one way. How would that affect things? And as you're talking about the Knights of the Vale joining in on in on this fight, I think okay, Littlefinger, he's already working to get Sansa out and move there like to the veil and acquire power and all all that kind of stuff but if what you're saying is if they're already engaged and they're working with rob and and catelyn it kind of strengthens her position it's like i kind of feel like littlefinger wants to do something where he is putting himself in a more important role or he's in a position of power where that way catelyn might have to lean on him you Mm -hmm. know And, and if lysa goes ahead and she does this on her own and the veil already shifts over there, and Littlefinger had nothing to do with it. Well, shoot! I mean, I'm like, hold on, Lysa, you gotta wait a second so I can get Sansa out of here, which is bonus points towards what he's doing with, you know, working towards acquiring uh, Catelyn. And then also, if he can convince Lysa, her sister, let's go help your sister. I mean, you know, there, there's there's all of that. That would be that. There's a lot. There, there's a lot kind of going on there. So I really. Right. The veil is a big wild card. That's a- right, because I mean, a big a big part of it is he gets rid of. I mean, he marries Liza, right? But he, the whole p- part of that whole deal is that he takes Sansa with him, marries Liza, and then gets Liza to, and not. I mean, he boots her through the moon door, but uh, they they he gets the the veil to believe that she kills herself, right? So, so there's definitely so there's definitely some of us. Uh, so, you know, so, so, some of the, some of those scenarios that it's like wow, then you know ultimately ends up a, a, ends ends up happening. So yeah, as no. uh, what, what what about you? What's a what's a what if? What's a what if for you? Well, for me, um, you know, like I, again going back to S- Sir Douglas, um, his thought about what if, uh gosh, what if Rob had had joined up with the Tyrells? You know, and that is such a that, that's that's really interesting. It's something that even you know, like Catelyn is thinking that, and it's sort of like, wow, that that's freaking amazing. Um, and it's it's those subtle little tiny changes. So for me, what if Sansa would have married Willis Tyrell? Like it takes her away. What if the what if the Tyrells could have actually gotten her away? And I think some people might think that's a dead end. You know, maybe like you you got a high garden, and is 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 that it? Is it is it over? Um. But I don't, and the odd thing is you don't really want to give the Tyrells sort of like put them in the driver's seat and let them control this, but they actually had the ability to possibly do this. I mean, the Lannisters are almost indebted to them, right? Ironically, had had Catelyn, when she left after Renly was assassinated, if she was nowhere near that assassination attempt and she had her wits about her and she wasn't trying to save uh, Brienne, she was in a perfect position to walk over to Mace Tyrell and, and acquire him, etc., uh, and, and maybe pull those forces over towards Rob. As Sir Douglas said, she thinks about that later. And then, so I was thinking about Sansa. If she does actually go to High Garden, they are like in. They're sitting prime. I mean, they're really sitting sitting good there. They've got essentially the heir to Winterfell uh, at that point in time. The whole Tyrion mess is is whatever, and it does throw off sort of jo- uh, Joffrey's assassination. Right, I mean, mm-hmm. so you you throw if they're able to get her out sooner, um, but because the Lannisters intervene, keep her in King's Landing, you know, Littlefinger then is going to use that, and you know, um, the Tyrells are, are using her in that position since they can't take her uh, for for Willis. Well, let's we're going to leave her there. She's close enough that we can poison the king, and then Littlefinger is also getting what he wants and moving her as as another piece to the veil. So she's essentially. Because when she's in the veil, she is just another. I mean, she's important because she is one of those last remaining Starks from Winterfell, as far as we know. And if Highgarden had that chess piece, it's a big deal. But there's right. no one in Highgarden that we really like. I mean, are we just all of a sudden? 
I mean, Sansa loves the idea of it, and it would just take us a whole different direction, and it almost turns into House Tyrell would have grown and would have grown in influence and power and negotiation status and all of that. I think that would have been kind of crazy, and I think that is sort of what, when George is writing the series, especially when he got into some of that, it's crazy that he kind of, he says he gets into sort of like a, a writing fever, and this just all kind of came out. Um, because there are so many different ways in which you could go. Like, why, as you say, why doesn't the veil intervene? What's 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 going on? He and his mind is is developing all this secret stuff with Littlefinger, keeping them off the chessboard um, for later. You know, it's 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 wild. And then he teases us with this possible alliance between House Stark and Tyrell, like twice. Mm -hmm. Catelyn thinks about it with Robin and Marjorie. And then again, we're, it's thrown in our face that, well, Sansa could go there as well. Like, that, like maybe that's a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good angle. And the more you learn about House Tyrell, they were once stewards who then were elevated into this um, position of, of power. And they, they acquire a high garden. Uh, so I think that would be interesting. I don't really know. And, and, and again, you can almost kind of put yourself into a dead end there. Like, like what do you do? It, basically, if you keep Littlefinger involved, you kind of have to shift away from the Lysa stuff, which is not good because he's got a history with Lysa and that makes sense. Um, the only route that you can kind of go there is is sort of a, a bickering, a, a back and forth between House Tyrell and House Lannister. Um, and then maybe Sansa is sitting there more sa you know, safely and is able to um, somehow, you know, get get some of the Winterfell forces, you know, to um, strike at strike at, at, at the Lannisters. But really, they're suing for peace there. If Sansa goes with the Tyrells and, and that happens, I mean, things start to really just calm down. Everything would just mm -hmm. start to kind of calm down. And so the way in which you avoid that is she doesn't go there and she goes to the Vale and Littlefinger is up to no good. Um, but I love it. I love thinking about the different scenarios and, and where this a slight little change would take and us in, it, in a different how it, direction. Yeah, just puts us in totally yeah. totally different scenarios absolutely so but yeah guys hey shoot us a raven leave us a comment let us know what you guys think and uh keep these ravens coming and we will keep answering them so all right guys with that uh that is our show for today um so we want to thank you for playing the game of thrones in our next episode we will be discussing chapter 34 john 4 of a clash of kings if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a raven at btkcast at gmail.com. We will see you in a week, and remember that winter is coming.